that was my fear that I was going to have that same situation and here and I had these kids to take care of by myself and I'm like how am I going to even be able to get up out of the bed? I was actually born in Chicago and now I live in Tennessee and uh, have lived here for many many years. Met my husband uh, 19 years ago and I have uh, three children. One of my children is my daughter Selena and uh, she's the love of my life. Um, love to hurt her sometimes but most of the time she's the love of my life. Whenever uh, she was born uh, my husband is Hispanic and he was in Mexico at the time and so I was going through this pregnancy and everything by myself which I had my family but they didn't live around me so I was basically um, going through it by myself then uh, they told me I was gonna have to have a c-section and which is not normally a big deal but I'd had one with my son and I had a very very bad time it was so scary it was scary because I knew what a hard time I had with him um, so I was just dreading it. And the day came, my sister was came with me to the hospital. My oldest son was in school, but my youngest son was there with me. He was two and a half. So we got there real early at the hospital. And whenever they took me in, the anesthesiologist, they, they were gonna keep me awake. Cause just cause where I'd had a hard time with my um, middle son, they said, no, we're not gonna knock you out or do anything like that. We wanna keep you awake. So they had, um, they tried for about two hours to get a spinal tap in my back and then they never could get it. And they said, no, they told the doctor, they said, no, we're just gonna have to put her to sleep. We just can't do this. And he said, no, you're not. Thank goodness I had a good doctor. He said, no, you're not because she had a hard time before. Don't know what kind of problems we're gonna find once we get in there with scar tissue and everything. So no, we don't wanna keep the baby under that long anyway. So he said, take her back to her room, let her rest for a while and let's do somebody else. We've got them in line here. And um, he said, then I want the chief up here. Let's get him up there and see what he can do. So it finally, a couple hours later, it was finally my turn. Then I was like, oh no, what am I gonna have to do again? You know, sit through this, this poking and prodding again that they were doing. It was, it was scary and it was hard and my blood pressure was running up and it was just bad. So they got me in there and something that should have took five minutes, still even with the chief took about 20. But they finally, got me there and my sister was able to be in with me once they started the procedure. They did what they needed to do and uh, they uh, brought me out a beautiful baby girl. She was seven pounds and uh, ten ounces and just just perfect and she's been that way ever since. Her dad didn't even get to see her until she was four months old and we took a trip to Mexico which was fun with a, a four month old and a two and a half year old and a, and a seven year old so we had we had a fun time though but it was it was a scary time but everything has worked out for the best and it always does because we have we have God on our side and he takes care of us and watches out for us every day describe to me when you first saw Selena oh uh, it was it was just joy. I mean, I have two boys, and don't get me wrong, I love them with the bottom of my heart. But, you know, when you have your baby girl, and I'm gonna cry, I'm a crier, sorry. <laughs> but when you have your baby girl there, and, and you're holding her, and you know, this is, you know, a part of you, a part of your life that you've created, and the blessing that God has given you. So, I mean, it's, it's just wonderful. It's overwhelming. After she was born, no, complications? Or? No, no, it was, it was amazing because, I mean, nothing about my doctor, really, but I had a different doctor from, from her, from my um, son that was born, and um, he did a wonderful job, did everything the way it was supposed to be. I was up, moving, walking around that very next day. I mean, it was, it was amazing, but before with my other one, um, I just, I couldn't even raise up out of the bed after six weeks without help. It was just, it was awful. And that's what I was, that was my fear that I was going to have that same situation. 
and here and I had these kids to take care of by myself and I'm like how am I gonna even be able to get up out of the bed so but thank you know praise God it was everything went well it was really good mm-hmm. as a parent of uh, biracial kids mm-hmm. here in the south were there any concerns in terms of their identity or just like wondering about like how your kids would I- identify or how um, they would be perceived by the outside world? We have a, a pretty large Hispanic population in the area, um, so that that really wasn't an issue, um, and I don't I don't think they've had any concerns um, in school or anything. They've they've all done well, um, both of them. And I know they get sometimes they get teased about little things, you know, but it's nothing nothing cruel, nothing bullying or something like that. It's this, you know. Um, uh, I know she's been t- she's been told that she's the the whitest Hispanic girl that they've ever seen. You know, just simple things like that. Her kids teasing with her, her friends and stuff, but nothing in nothing um, in a mean or hurtful way. What does your bond or your relationship with Selena mean to you now? You know, as she's she's a teenager now. She's 16 in a couple of weeks, and um, as a teenager, you know. The bond with the parents aren't quite, they have their friends and stuff, and I totally understand that. But I know when she was younger, you know, we were like best friends. And and I think that she would say that, and I know I would say that with her. And we still are, but I know she's got her, her friends and stuff, That and that's an important part of life. That's an important part of growing up. I mean, if she didn't, I would be concerned, because you got to have that, that communication with, with others like that. So, yeah, we have a, and we, but we're still close. We talk all the time about just, you know, like boys and friends in school and just all kinds of stuff. I feel like that she's open with me about stuff and, and, you know, if there's anything that I have, she asks me questions about, you know, when I grew up, you know, things that I may not want to be honest with my daughter about, but, you know, I, I am because that's just, you know, you gotta, that's just how you gotta be.